Hello and welcome back on my YouTube channel, Part Doshi, Learning by Doing. So today, this is going to be the second part of the UiPath Apps Crash Course that I'm working on. In this video, we will cover many different topics as we covered in the previous video. And I would highly recommend it that you have, if you have not watched the part one, you should watch it because there we are covering the main basics and three important integrations. I'm doing a quick recap over here. In this part two, there we covered three important things. One is how you can create the basic structure of the app. So this was the app that we created, a registration app, you can say. There we did three types of integration. We saw how you can run a process from UiPath apps. I had faced some issues with my unattended license, so we used the attended license. And then we saw how a process can be executed, how data in arguments can be passed from app to the process. And if we have some output, how we can display that in apps. And then we saw how to integrate apps with data service. How can you integrate data service in your apps? How you can enter the data, how you can upload the files in the data service as well. Then what we saw is how to use queues. In queues, we saw how you can create a queue JSON schema, how this data can be entered in an orchestrator queue. And we also saw the integration of storage buckets. Now we'll further continue this use case or we'll do some different modifications and we'll work on the other controls of the apps. So let's get started. And yes, if you have any questions, any feedbacks, feel free to put them in the comment section or reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can find my LinkedIn profile as well in the description. So you can reach out to me in case of any. All right. So in the previous video, we had also created an entity. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. Here are all the data is text. We had created text, 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 experience, profile, picture, and everything. If I go to data over here, in one of the rows, I had the data entry. In the other, I did not. Uh, I'm going to delete this thing. Delete the other. Okay. Now in this video, uh, what we can do is, let me show you different controls that we have. So today we are going to mainly focus on displaying the tabular data. What are the different controls that we have to display the tabular data in UiPath apps, okay? Let me see if I have some entity that I can use. Okay. Now, before we go ahead with the further part, we'll see one very interesting feature. That is UiPath Apps Autopilot. So I'm going to show you how we can use the Autopilot feature and how amazing this feature is, okay? So if you see, when I navigate to UiPath Apps, in build, I have this option, generate with Autopilot. You see here I have an option app from entity. So I have this entity that is approval request that has product ID, product name, product current price, updated price, requested by, requested on, and requested status. Okay. So what I'm going to do is in UiPath apps. Now, if I've already created an entity, this is normally what we do in different automations. We'll pick the entity or we will design the database structure first and decide all the input and output fields over there. And then we will go ahead and build our project or our C sharp .net, any kind of project. Here we have done the same thing. I'm going to generate an app from entity and I'm going to pick this approval request and I'm going to click on send. Build app from approval request to submit data. And once I click on send, it is generating the layout and this can take a while. So if you see, how amazing this feature is. You define your complete entity, you define your database structure, just select that and this will create a complete form for you. Now, I, I, I totally find it very amazing because this is something that I will do in 
any of these scenarios. So let's see how well it builds the form and what it builds for us. So now if you see here, it created two pages. One is the main page and one is the approval request page if you see over. Now how that is getting embedded? When I click on add control in containers, I have something called as page control. When you use that, you can define a page that you want to display. So what you can do is you can create a main page. And if you have four different parts on your that page, you can create four different pages and then use a page container and display them over here. So if I do this, you see, I can display two of the things. And if I change the style to horizontal, they will be displayed side by side. And that is how we can do, it. but I'm going to delete this. But now if you see over here, I have successfully already created an app. I, I did not even had to take the efforts of doing it. It did it on its own. So this is our form that has got, this is our app that has got created. We have product ID, we have product name, and obviously we can change the label fields. If I want to rename this, I can just go to my page and it is going to be product ID. So if you see product ID, product name, I'm going to change it everywhere and you can do the same thing. So for that, you will have to create any kind of an entity. As you can see, I have created an entity and you can create with same fields. That is product ID, product name, product current price. Let's change it. This shouldn't take more time. Hardly a Okay. Now let's see what is there on submit button. On submit button, a create entity record rule is already used. So this is the power and this is the capability of the autopilot feature that all the functionalities are already implemented and you have to just twist and turn the things. But now if you want to use a create entity record on your own, how you can do that? You can click on the submit button. You can go to the events page like how you see I went and here is an option to create entity record, okay? And now what I'm going to do is in entities, if you see over here, I have an option to select an entity. I'm going to select approval request. Then you have product current price, ID, name, updated price status and everything. You can click this. You can click on controls. And then if you see, the name of this. What is the name of this? Text box product ID. If I go back to edit rule, click on this, go to controls and search for product ID. If I select this drop down, you have to select a value. I'll, I'm going to repeat that again. For product ID, if you want to enter some data that was entered into the form and you want to enter it over here, let's click this. Let's click on controls, product ID value now what is the expression over here approval request page that is my page name dot the control name dot the value if i scroll down you can see the same expression was auto generated approval request page the page name dot the control dot the value i'm going to delete this so this is how you can add an entry in data service this we had done in our previous video as well when we were taking the details and adding the details in the form. But yes, here we are doing it again. All right. So and this is how all the data is entered over. Now the requested status, I want a default value to go over there. So I'm going to click on this and click on pending over. Okay. So the requested status is going to be pending. And this I'm going to keep. I'm going to remove this basically. I don't need it. So we are going to delete the request status. We are going to keep only this six fields that we have, product ID, product name, product current price, 
updated price requested by and requested on. Okay. So this is how our current structure of the app looks like. On event, we have this editor. Now, what we are going to do is before we go and look into the controls that we have of displaying the tabular data or working on that, let me show you some functions with respect to data services and how that values can be used. Okay. So let's do one. Let us quickly create an entity. Uh, let me see if I have it already. Product prices. Okay. So if you see, I have this one entity called as product prices that is already there. I'll see if I can put all the entities JSON schema in a GitHub file and add it in the description so you guys can import the same while you are doing that. Okay, I I'll definitely try to do it. And here I have similar. So now what I want in my product ID, instead of text box, I want it to be a drop down. So let's change that. Okay. I have deleted the product ID and I'm going to take an input and I'm going to use a drop down. In drop down, first I will have to add that entity of the product prices. So I'm going to click on that control. Go to product prices and add that. Okay. And here I'm going to name it as product ID. Obviously, our submit button has some error. So we cannot have spaces. Once that is done, I'm going to change the label. Okay, on submit button, we will have to remap it. We will do it. Now, how can you use the data service to display the values in a drop down column? You have to click this drop down in the list source. Click on this. The entity that you have added, you have to use that. After that, click on query builder. Here, select your entity product prices. If you have any condition, if you want to conditionally fetch some data, you can add that. So if I click on add condition and I enter any kind of condition, that is okay. But I don't have any such things. If you want to sort it, you can sort by a particular field. I don't want to sort it out. I, I don't have any such requirements right now, but yes, you can do that. So I'm going to uh, go back over here. There is no additional settings. So I'm just going to select the product prices. That is my entity and click on save. And that's it. So if you see, it is going to fetch the data, but now it is going to fetch the complete entity. Which column values I want to display in product ID column. So it is going to be the product ID. In column name, open expression editor, product ID. All right, so that's it on the submit button. I'm going to edit the rule. Obviously, this is going to be an error because we deleted the previous value. So let's cancel it. Click on this controls and we created a drop down product ID. In that, there is selected item. Uh, one second. We should have done this. Value well, should be product. So if you see in case of drop down, how the syntax is, let me open it in expression editor, this page name dot the control name dot value. Since we have integrated it with entity, we are getting the column names directly over here. So which one that is product ID. All right. So let me click on save now. Going to close it and let's preview. So now what we are checking is from data service is my values being displayed in that drop down or not. Okay. So are we missing some integrations? We have the data over here. Year zero one. It 
shows it has two values, but it is not displaying the values. Let us close and check it. If we go back to the page, okay, I think that I'm going to clear this, indicate the product prices again, and just click on save over here. Product ID, let me check if I'm giving the correct name. Product ID. Okay, so there is no space over here. Uh, let me check that. I have entered space over here. Let's close it and let's preview it again. So the column name is definitely very critical. You cannot enter an incorrect column name. And now let's check it. App is loaded and we have the values over here. So what was my mistake? The product ID name, column name, it does not have a space. I just used the display name. So we were making a mistake over here. Now, what I want to do next is once I select the product ID, I want the product name and the product current price to be auto populated from the values that I have in my data service. Okay, so this is next complex thing we are going to do. All right, so we'll come to product name and then the updated price will be. And in product, we are going to make it disabled so that no one can edit that to save and yeah yo we are going to do two things now here we don't necessarily need to do that but since to explain the concept i'm going to do that i'm going to create two variables one is going to be the product name value and type is going to be a text. Let me click on create. That's it. We'll just do only for one. So on drop down value change, I want to create a row. I want to set the value of my app variable product name. Value. What I did on drop down in events, we have one property that when the drop down value changes, what you want to do. So I'm going to click on that using a set value, what is the value controls product ID value name. So let's use that. What I'm doing is the page, the product ID drop down dot value dot product name is what I want of the selected value. Okay. We have to take it of the selected value. Selected item product. I just took it off the report. Let's check it if that works out. Okay. We forgot one thing. I set the value, but I did not map it over. So the default text is going to be my app variable, the product name value. I'm going to give it default text. So if you see on value change, the product name is getting updated over here. Starlight dust material, ADC chemical, 10 liters. So this is how you have to do it. Okay. I'll take a quick pause over here. Do a recap of what we did till now in last time. We first created an already, we first used an already created entity using the UiPath apps autopilot feature. We generated an app. In that, we just remove some of the fields that we don't want. And after that, we have this drop down that is product ID, wherein we are displaying the values in that drop down from our data service master entity of product prices. What we did next is we don't want user to enter the name since we already have the master data of that. So, user selects the product ID, the product name, and the product current price will get auto populated. So now I'm going to create one more app variable. Product current price value. What is the type of job? It's a number. So I 
think we should be okay with tab. On value change, go back over here. This use set value for that. Click on this app variables, product current price value, and here controls product ID, selected item, and we are going to use the product price. It says does not allow the conversion to double. So I'm going to write convert dot to double bracket and this. And that should be okay. All right. So we have said that and here in current price we have to give the default value of product current price value. Okay. And this is a text box number. Let's preview it and see if it auto populates or not. Currently it is zero because there is no value. If I select this, the current price and the product name is populated. And this could definitely be one of the scenarios when you are working for any of your client projects, right? They might ask that, okay, we have a master table and when the user selects value in a drop down, I want to dynamically update a set of call, a set of text fields or set of controls in the apps, how we can do that. So this is how you can do it. Okay. All right. So we have created this, and now these details will be entered by the user. Requested by is also something that we can default, and requested on is also something that we can default. So, in requested by, now how to get a user's email ID, whoever the user is using the app, if you want to dynamically get that user's email ID and default that in that particular text box. Requested by, I'm going to type current user dot email. That's it. And you have the email ID of that particular person. Let's see on requested on if we have some option. If we can do this. Date and time dot now cannot be converted to date only. Okay, it is of type date. Well, we'll leave it as it is. No problem. So we have defaulted this value as well and we want it to be disabled. Sometimes it is possible that you might have multiple disabled fields because you just you want the user to see that data, but you will do something else. And on submit we have. So now let's do it. Updated price is 270. Requested on. I'm going to keep it as today's. And I'll click on submit. Now we don't have any spinner or anything that we had in our version one that we were working on. We can add that. But now let's come to our data service entities, approval request. And if you see, we have the data over here. Product ID, product name, product current price, updated price, requested by, and requested on. All right. So, and this is how we have successfully created right now an app that was dynamically created using a data service entity we used one more entity as our master entity to fetch in all the details. And then we successfully submitted the data. Now, what are we going to do next? I'm just going to show one simple control right now. And let's do that. Let me add a button over here on this page. And I'm going to keep it on the, I think, yeah, the right hand side. Let's suppose we are creating a page where this is an admin page. Now, in the next part of this video, we'll develop a role based access mechanism as well. But for now to understand, view pending request.
I, I, yes. View pending request. Now on click of this, what I want is another page to open. Okay, I want that page to open and I want to show all the requests that were submitted in a tabular form. How can I do that? So first let me add a page and we'll use a blank page. So I'm going to click on enter. I'm going to rename this to pending request. Uh, all right. And in add control, now you need to go to the display tab and here you have an option of displaying a table. Okay. Once you select that in the data source, you have to select the query builder, come over here and select product prices, click on save. Once you do that, your tabular data is over here. So you can use a data service entity, use a table control and display the data. We'll add more complexity to it in the further part of the video. So stay tuned. Right now we are just going one step after the other so that you understand about the different controls, when these should be used, how these should be used, and what are its properties and function. So what I did is I created a page that was pretty straightforward, okay, where it displays the data. Now if I come over here, view pending request, I'm going to go on events, create a rule. And in this, I'll select open a page. In page, I'll select pending request. That is the page that I want to. Now, if you see, there are multiple options over here. Show as pop-up model, show as bottom sheet, prevent close on click. I'm not going to do any of that as of now. I'm just going to leave it as simple as it is. Let me click on the preview button. So what I just quickly did in last couple of minutes is, I created a page, displayed the tabular data of the, okay, so it opened that particular page directly. I think our main page has one second. Okay. I made a mistake over here. I created the event on the page lo load, I wanted to create it on a button. All right, I have it on a button. But I think you already saw that it opened the tablet. Okay, now let's suppose the admin is coming to the app. He wants to either submit a request and let me do this requested by Neither wants to do this. Now the request is submitted or he wants to see what are the pending requests. If I click on this, you see a new page has opened and it is displaying me the list of data which is there over here. That is the product ID, product name. Okay, here we have selected, I think, the wrong entity. Let us come over here, pending request. Here we have to select query builder. We have to select the approval request because that is where we are submitting the data, right? And you can shuffle this. So I want product ID, product name, product current price, updated price, request status. I want to keep it as. So product ID, product name, product current price, updated price, requested by, requested on status. I indicated the wrong entity over there. If I click on the preview button, the page is loading. And once I click this, you can see that it is product ID, name, current price, updated price, requested by, requested on, and requested status. Everything is being displayed over here to the admin of the app. Now, how you can create an admin kind of mechanism or how you can show controls based on a particular access level that we'll see in the further part of the video because that will become a little complex. But for now, this is how you can use your tabular control that is off table and display the data. Now, what if I tell you that I can give two buttons over here? 
to the user and they can actually click on a button that is approve or reject and the request status can be updated. How about that? Let's quickly build that. So now what we are doing is we are creating an approval kind of mechanism in our UiPath apps. Okay. Now there are different ways to do that. I'm going to go to this page, click on this and click on the edit grid. So I'm going to use a edit grid. <coughs> Sorry. In data source, I'm going to select the query builder and I'll select the approval request and click on save. Okay. So we have done that. Let's shuffle it over here as well. Product ID current price requested by requested status. Okay. Now let's preview it again and just see. I, I just don't want to give plain information to you if you're watching the video. I just want to go step by step so that you can understand the different features and functionalities. So now if you see over here, the admin can actually edit the values over here. So if you see product ID, this, 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 and over here. If I click on this edit, I can select this approve and I can make the change. So now let's see in our approval request. If I refresh this, I think it was not saved. And let me refresh the page. No, it is still showing up. Look. Is that some file disabled? Editable true errors, delete rows, search is false. We don't need anything else. Row edit, row modified. Give me a second. All right. So here we forgot to configure one thing. In events, you have this following option. Row selected, row added, row modified, and row deleted we will have to add what happens when we do any of these things. If a row is modified, deleted, added, or selected, what reflection should happen in the data service center? Now, since we are focusing on only the modifications, I'm going to do that. So on row modified, and now we will use second rule that we have seen, of, that we will see of uh, data service entities, that is update entity record. Here, which entity record should be updated? Entities approval request, entity record ID, controls, edit grid, selected item. Don't use the product ID, but you have to use this particular ID. So entity record ID, when I go over here, this ID, which is there, that we have to specify. Based on that, now we have to provide the values over here. So product current price, Controls, edit grid, selected item, product current price, it will remain the same. Controls, edit grid, selected item, product item. Whatever changes will be done over here, that will be reflected. We majorly have to update the request status only, but we'll still update all the data in case if the user makes any changes or if the admin has all the access, right? So if admin wants to make the changes, request status, okay, we will.
all. So now we have updated over here. And we'll just show a message. Keep it as success. Your data has been modified successfully. On error, show a message. Fail to update the data. Please try again. This will be an error. So what I have done is, on the row modified, I think I have added the room. Now let's preview it. Go to view pending request. This we don't want to update. I want to click on approved over here. So now if you see your data has been modified successfully, here it is approved and here also it is approved. This one, I am going to click on rejected. Your data has been modified. So if you see by now above the table, which is there, this is the edit grid that I'm showing, right? Here, I don't want any search functionality or something, but I want to update the status. So if you see here, the admin can enter the data, change any of this data, he can delete the rows if it deletes and you have configured that delete. You have configured the delete part of this particular entity. Then that action will be performed. But if nothing is configured, then nothing will happen. So this is how we have seen the second control of using the tabular data. First, we saw a normal table to display the data. This is edit grid. There is a search option and there are many more things to edit grid. I'm not planning to cover that right now, but Right now, we are just trying to understand the basic fundamentals of these particular controls. All right. So this is the second what you can do. Now, what is the third control that we have? This is an interesting one, and which is going to be a custom list. And let me keep it in between. OK. So now, I hope you have understood what is a table control, what is an edit grid control. In edit grid, you just provide the data service entity and that's it. After that, you don't have to particularly do anything. You just have to configure the events that are in custom list. You can specify particularly what you want to display, how you want to display. You can modify everything. Over here, if you see when I was updating the data, when I update approve, I just had a tick mark and a cross over there. What if I wanted buttons in that place, right? So, and that is also something we can do. So now we are going to quickly configure this product ID and I'm going to display a text box one. So how many I need? I need one product ID, two, three, four. And Let's have four of them only requested by requested on we want to add right now. So one uh, text box is one. Let me make the type as horizontal. Text box two. I'm going to rename it. So don't worry. text box three is going to be a number. Current price. Text box four, and then I'm going to add a button over here. And I'm going to add a button. You can just follow the same steps along with me in the video and we'll come to what we are doing. The first is going to be product ID.
and let me do one more thing let me add one more text box we have to change the label as well this i'm going to keep it as let's take all this thing let's rename their labels as well All right. So what I did till now is I used a custom list. I added all my controls that I have within that. Whichever data I want to display. Product ID, ID, product name, current price and updated price. And I added two buttons. Now why that buttons is I'm going to explain now. And let us change the text of that buttons. Uh, we are going to keep this as a proof. And we are going to keep the other button as Richard. Click on save. All right. So we have the two buttons. What to do on that? We will come to that one. Now, if I come to my custom list, data source, query builder, approval request, and click on save. That's it. Click on the save button. Now let's preview it and see what is happening, and then we'll come back to our app. Okay, we forgot one thing to do that is very important. What we did is we mapped the entity, but how will we know what data is to be passed over here? So in the default text over here, we'll have to specify that. So now if I go over here, so what? we missed over here is mapping the data into this way. Now, if I go over here, and if I go to default text, I have to open the expression editor. You have to use syntax as this row. The custom list will automatically understand what that particular row data is. So this row dot product ID. That's it. Here, you have to open the expression editor. This row dot ID. Okay, so let's see if it can be converted dot two string. All right, we'll see that. Here, I will have to convert it to double. Let's see if we have to. Okay, it is taking the value. Product updated price.
So if you see both the data, it is displaying over here. This piece and all because we have it pretty much unstructured right now. Product ID, product name, product current price, and product updated price. And these are the entries that we have over here. Now, what I want to do is clicking on this approve and reject. I want to display my, I want to perform my operation in the backend. All right. So let's see that. Before that, we'll just put one more filter on this. In custom list, we are directly indicating that in query builder, we'll add a condition. Select field. If your request status equal to pending save and add the control let's add another button over here on this page that will be home page click on save in the event open page pages and it is my main page because i don't have the back navigation so i'm going to do that now let's see what happens because if something is already approved or rejected i don't want to show that to my admin in the custom list okay so if i click on this you see no data is displayed over here why because everything is approved and rejected already now if i go back to home page product id this updated price 255 requested on this and click on sub we don't have any spinners right now but it is submitted data is displayed over here. now let's make this field has non-hidden and see if we our value is getting displayed over. We will just submit one more data over here. So all this is displayed. You see, our ID is also displayed over here. So now we have successfully used a custom list. Now you see the difference over here. In custom list, if I make all this field disabled, right, then the user will just have an option to create approve and reject and here your data service fields and everything are displayed. So there can be different use cases where you might need to use a custom list where you want to give this kind of buttons. So here there is an option to delete and all that and you can disable or enable that options. But if I don't want to get in all of that in the edit grid, if I scroll down over here in the edit grid, you see editable add row delete row such if you want that kind of dynamic features then you can use the edit grid but if not then you definitely have this custom list so on approve or reject now it should update the status as well so if we see here it is pending we have two pending so on approval it should approve that and on reject it should reject so this is the third control that we had on approve let's go and click down click update entity record and then we'll just see how we can update one thing only entity and approval request controls custom list selected item So what it says value of type string cannot be converted to quick. All right. So now what we have to do over here is we have to provide the entity record. So click on this, go to controls, go to custom list, selected item, data, and select the ID. This ID that is your GUID that you have GUID ID. After that, the same thing that you have to follow for your controls custom list, selected item, data, 
and then select the current price so that i i while i'm doing this it is not being recorded i just pause the video and i have added everything over here and we have clicked on approve on when updated we have this uh, show message over here and on error also we have the show message field error and this stuff all right so we have done all these steps and let me click on close so we have only configured the approve button now in my previous video you might have seen uipath apps custom list i have shown the custom list data in a different way i've created column headers then use label to display the data since that is already done over there here i thought of doing something different so let me preview this thing Go to view pending request. The data is displayed. Now I want to click on upload. Request upload successfully. And if you see the data got eliminated from here. Now I have not configured on the reject button. And I am not going to do that in the video. But if I click this also on approve. Request approved successfully. You see, can see all the three are approved. One is rejected. And here also you can see in edit data, we can see the updated data. Now, why I'm not doing for the reject button? Because I want you guys to do it. You have seen the video. You know what are the steps I have followed, how I have configured the approve button. So I want you to do it for the reject button. So in this video, in the part two of the UiPath apps crash course 2024, what all we covered? We saw how we can create an app directly using the entity that we already have. We eliminated some fields. We dynamically displayed the data in the drop downs based on the drop down value selection. We displayed the data in other fields by fetching from the entity records. Further, we created a pending request page where we saw how we can just by default view all the data in the table control. That was this one. Then we saw how to use the edit grid. We have seen edit grid only on the fundamental level. There are more things that you can explore, but that is what I'll do in further part of the videos. But first, I just want to cover all the basics and all the fundamentals so you understand the different controls and features associated with them. And then we saw a custom list, maybe something similar to what Edit Grid was. But here, we, by our own, can add the custom fields. We can add buttons. Here, we just had an option to add, use the a tick mark and the cross button that we have but in this we had an option to add the approve and reject button just to make the customer experience more better so in that way you can use table control custom list control and edit grid in different scenarios and in different ways i hope this video helped you more understand more additional feature of uipath apps of its different controls how it functions and with respect to data service as well, because today we covered many things with respect to data service, creating, updating it, showing the values in the drop down, and that kind of features. Thank you for watching the complete video. I hope the videos are not too long, but even if it's long, it's worth your time watching the complete video. And I will see you all soon in the part three of the series of UiPath Apps Crash Course 2024.